Okay, we're going to be working on problem number 17 from your textbook. Uh, this is about a boat. It looks something like this. There's the, the, the bow up on this end and the aft. Um, there's a mast in the middle. It tells us the distances that the mast is from the edge of the boat. This is 4.88 meters and this is 2.74 meters and the mast is 4.8 meters or 88 meters tall and there's some wires that attach the mast to the the bow and also the aft and they call these the for these are the forestay and the backstay apparently these are words I'm not familiar with maybe some of you are um, so it tells us that the forces on the forestay the, the tension in this wire uh, is basic the tension here in the forestay is equal to a thousand newtons um, and so what that means is if the tension in this wire is a thousand newtons it means that it exerts a thousand newton force uh, on the boat down here it also exerts a thousand newton force on the mast up at the top right so uh, that depending on which object we, we're interested in looking at whether it's the uh, whether it's the mast or the ship um, whichever rigid body we're interested in really looking at, um, we know that the thousand newton force is along the direction of this wire, uh, either down or up, depending on which object we're interested in. Uh, we so we can even draw that right. There's like we can draw a vector here of that force going down, or the force here on the bottom part going up, of equal length. Um, there's also a force in a similar fashion over on this side. And this is called the the force in the in the backstay, the the wire attached to the aft of the boat. Uh, it, it is equal and opposite. The tension in this wire has to be the same throughout, and so that can tell us something about the force acting on the mast due to this wire, and the force acting on the boat due to this wire. The same wire, right? It's still the same wire. So um, we know the distances here. So that means we can figure out something about these angles. I'm just going to label these angles something. I'll call this theta one. Call this theta two. Um, we can already see something by symmetry that this angle here is going to be 45 degrees. This is equal length sides. We can actually calculate that if we're not too sure, but we can actually see that by, by looking at it. Um, the pr problem also tells us that the, the mass of the mast, <laughs> mass of the mast, is 120 kilograms, and uh, so there's another force exerted this um, downward. And the question in the problem <clears throat> asks us what is the force on the back, the force of the backstay, so either of these forces, and also the normal force um, on the mast. So, and it asks us to ignore any frictional forces to the right or to the left. I'm guessing that also means anything else. So it, it's trying to tell us, I think, in the problem that it's only the normal, the, the force is only a vertical force, and that's the boat, the, the force here, that's the normal force, but I think it's important to label this. This is the force on the mast by the boat. And this here is the force on the mast by the earth. Okay, we're going to label each of these things carefully. This is the force. This this force up here. And the, the, these are the forces on the mast by the wire. You know, wire two, and this is the force on the mast due to wire one. Oop, due to wire one. So the the, the force day. So I mean, those are each important these are kind of the things that we can label because when it comes time to draw a free body diagram for either the boat or the mast we need it, it's helpful to make sure that we only include those forces that are acting on the object that we're interested in in looking at okay <coughs> so there's also a force acting on uh, the boat here right there's a a normal force from the mast acting on the boat which acts right at this point and that's going down equal to the weight because this entire weight is sitting on top of the um, of the boat so there's actually the force uh, on the boat by the mast right so there's a force acting on there as well this normal force isn't acting on the boat the normal force here going upward acts on the mast which is what keeps the mass um, supported in the air and this needs to be um, pretty sizable. It doesn't just account for this because it also has to account for each of these things, right? We can actually write that out a little bit. We could talk about um, the conditions for static equilibrium for this particular ship 
is, you know, for each of these rigid bodies is that the net forces have to be equal to zero and that the net torques have to be equal to zero as well. So we need to, um, we can pick one of our, um, one of our objects, we can either pick the mast or we can pick the, the ship here and talk about um, the forces that are acting and the torques that are acting about a particular point of interest. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and do that, right? You can think about where you would start this problem from. Um, there's lots of ways that you could get a, a pretty straightforward solution, um, but I, I think we can do that, right? So you go ahead and think about a point that you would pick. Let, let's say we want to be able to answer, uh, figure out what the, the force due to the, the backstay is. So that could be either one of these forces. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point along, on this boat at the very, um, at the point where the mast is. And the reason I'm going to do that is that uh, any forces acting along this axis through this point have no lever arm whatsoever. The, um, well, sorry, they do have a lever arm. So some of these don't. Uh, th this force and this force maybe don't have a lever arm. Um, but this force does. But the fact that the angle between the lever arm and the forces applied here would all be uh, in the same direction. They would all be parallel. And so any sign of the angle between those would be equal to zero. So we would have no net, no, no torques um, provided by any of these forces. Um, so we only need to worry about this force and this force. And those are the only ones that are applying any type of torque. Right? So let's write the net torque. Um, this is going to be for the ship. Um, and I'm just going to label this really carefully about the uh, mast point. Right? This is the point of the mast. So just to be very, very clear where I'm writing that, right? I'm going to write, make that uh, axis of rotation right there. Um, so the net torques are going to be equal to zero because that's my condition, right? So now I just need to count up all of the torques. Well, how many torques are acting on this? We have one here. <coughs> we have the torque due to the force day. Plus the torque due to the back stay. And that's going to be equal to zero. There's no other forces acting on this particular um, part of the ship, right? Okay. So um, we have. Um, what is that going to give us? So we have um, the torque due to the force day is simply its lever arm. Sorry, I'm going to get back to the picture here. Is its lever arm? RF, let's call that, um, and the back, the lever arm for the back stay is RB, and so we have RF cross FF, the, that's the force of the force stay, plus RB cross FB, which is the thing we want to know, and that's going to be equal to zero. So we can talk about the magnitude, then we're just going to use the, the magnitude is R, the magnitude of RF times the magnitude of the force day force times the sine of the angle between them, which we call that theta 1, plus the magnitude of RB times the magnitude of FB, which we don't know, times sine of the angle between those, which is theta 2, which we happen to know is 45 degrees from just kind of looking at the picture. Um, oh, one thing that... Um, I, I dropped the signs here, and that's a, that's a problem, right? Actually, this is kind of there's a mistake here at this point because here we had the, we we're accounting for the directions of each of these, so we need to make sure we we do a right hand rule real quick. Um, we can see that the torque um, by this force is going to be R cross F. That makes our thumb into the page, and um, in the same way, R cross F on this side, we take the R of the backstay crossed into F of the backstay gives us a torque out of the page, and so. We usually count counterclockwise as positive and counter or, uh, clockwise as negative. So this quantity here is going to be negative, right? This is the torque here is going to be negative when we sum it in. Here we are just summing vectors, but now since we have chosen this is just the magnitude, we need to uh, keep that direction in there somewhere. So then we can plug in our numbers um, and evaluate.
Sorry, there's a negative sign. I'm running out of time.